opening seller is Stephen, with a unique piece of salvage that has a theatrical connection. It's an interesting piece of architectural salvage. It's made of a hard concrete type material. First, Stephen is seeing expert Simon, who's been an auctioneer for nearly 30 years. I feel like going, I feel like going like this. Something <laughs> <laughs> you know, landed on the desk here. Wow. It's, you can't ignore it, can you? No, stunning, isn't it? Can't wait to find out more about it. Hello, Steve. Stephen. Hi, Nigel. Steve. Do you don't mind if I call you Steve? You can call me Steve or Cuba Steve. Cuba, Steve? Yeah. What, are you from Cuba? I've uh, done a bit of Cuban salsa dancing. Have you? Just do a bit for me now, will you? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about this beautiful object. OK, well, it's called a uh, hopperhead. Oh, it's a drain. In other so words. it's the top of a gutter from a theatre that was demolished in central London. I don't know which one, but it's got to be a couple of hundred years old. So, so and it comes with a lot of history, which is it comes fantastic. with a bit of history, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for bringing it in because I love it. Okay. And let's ask Simon, who's our expert, what he what he thinks of it too. Well, it's it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? A, a lot of the hoppers that I see usually cast iron or lead. Yeah. So to see a composite stone one is is is, is just amazing. It's got to be Georgian, you know, eighteen hundred ish. Oh, it's it's, it's wow. fascinating. I, I love all this acanthus leaf um, design on the front. Um, very so traditional? Very traditional. Canthus leaf symbolising longevity, immortality, long life, that kind of thing. These lovely swirls on the front. Yes, we've got knocks and glue repairs, Steve, haven't we, here and there, but yeah, I don't honestly mind because it's, it's such a fascinating piece. Oh, I'm getting more and more interested myself. <laughs> this is when it gets Why dangerous. don't you buy it before well, I mean, you go to the... That, 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 that is always a possibility. <laughs> I, I get carried away. Who do you think is going to go for this? Uh, James G, because it's uh, quite sort of architectural. Yes. Jane, interior design. Yes, she'll go for it. If, if one of them wants it, they'll just... They'll, 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 they'll go for it. Yeah. Because it's such, a, it's such an impressive piece. Yeah. So I think it's time to ask that very important question. What do you think it's worth? Pretty quick. <laughs> Straight in there, isn't it? Straight in there. That they are hard things to value because you won't find one exactly the same. My my feeling is it, it's it's two to three hundred quid bracket. I don't know where that falls in with your. I thought around sort of three fifty to six fifty. See how like. see how you see feel when you get in there. Yeah. Push the London theatre connection. Yep. Push the fact that it's a hopper. It's hollow inside, so it can be used for other things. And just th they'll fall in love with it. So just let it sell itself. Will do. Thank you. Thank very you for much. bringing it in because I really love it myself. Do you want to make an offer first? I was thinking I might. I don't know. Look, if they, if they are refused their offer, you can give me a six fifty now. <laughs> Good luck. You, you'll do well, I promise you. OK, thank you. Thanks for coming Thanks. in. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Thank you. <laughs> Great thing. He's a lad. He'll do well. He should do, shouldn't he? Yeah. Architectural salvage is the in thing at the moment. I think it's worth a bit more. But uh, we'll see when we get in there. Armed with the insider scoop, Stephen is ready to take on the dealers. Could this catch the eye of Gothical Curiosities specialist James? Or Jane? who loves trading in unusual pieces. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hello. Nice you to doing? meet you. You too. Hi. You and too. what's your name? Steve. Hello, Hello Steve. Steve. Yeah. Ian's up. Look at him, he's I'm out. out. I'm he's out away. the trap. And I'm having a look. Looks like a BT. Steve, where on earth did you get this from? 25 years ago, I bought a property in Highgate from a Dr Brostov and he had salvaged it some 15 years before from a theatre that was being demolished in central London. Cool. Aww. And he gave it to me. So do you know the theatre it came from? No, I don't. Yeah. Okay. That could be easily researched, surely. Yeah, yeah, I would have thought so. I mean, there's a bit of damage, but then that's to be expected. It's beautifully, beautifully carved. OK, so it's hollow. Yeah. That's interesting. That's a, quite an important part of it. Oh, OK. Makes it a one-of. Piece. Nothing to do with drains, is it? Yes. Oh, what the goes? But oh, it's what the, um, the drain? yeah. They caught what? Oh, what's the name hopper. now? Hopper. That's it. It's a hopper head. I think it's uh, it's nineteenth century. Do you think it's a 18th copy? Eighteenth century style. style. So it's seventeen 
50s to 70s in the style, so it would be Corinthian capitals. You'd have one either side of a doorway or several either side. And these would be at the top, and then you'd have a fluted column. Um, but I've not seen one as a hopper before, so that is quite, you know, that's a good selling point for it. I think salvage now is, is the up-and-coming thing. People want yeah. a one-off. Yeah, they want, they want something that everybody else no, can it's buy. Got, they exactly. want individual things. I have to say, Steve, I have completely lost my poker face. I mean, my partner specialises in this sort of stuff, and it's just what we look for all the time. That is just... that's magical. I think it's great. So why are you selling it, Steve? Well, uh, my wife and two children, they don't really like the older things. That's such a shame, cos it's so beautiful. But I love things like this. OK, Jane, I think you need to start the bidding on this one. The architectural hopperhead has been valued by Simon at two to three hundred pounds. With interest building, can Stephen push for more? I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to start at two... 30. I think you're messing around. I'll go 250. So sorry to interrupt. Hey, Nigel. Like, Hello. Hello. <laughs> so what do you think of this piece? Or Love it. We know you want it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's well, got a theatrical background. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So where have you guys got to with the bidding? 230 with did, me. Did you? And then Aidy's gone 250. And then I walk in. <laughs> you said you were going to wait to the end. 275. 300. 325. Are you seriously bidding, Nigel? Well, I just seem to be coming out. <laughs> <laughs> he likes it. He offered me a lot more for it earlier. Did he? Oh. Ah, you're trying to get it cheap. <laughs> 400. Oh, I knew oh. we'd go there. <laughs> I'm going to lead you to it. Right, Bye, get back here. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. So I'm going to go 45. Sorry, AD. This is going to be between you and me, isn't it? Probably. 450. Unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> well done, James. James! He's in the room. James is now in the scenario. <laughs> I'm going to go 460. It's just that I know a little secret. 500. Oh. <laughs> I think he's got a buyer already. I think I have, actually, though. That's kind of why I'm bidding on it. 5.25. I'll go a bit more than that. I'll go 5.50. 5.75. Oh. I think that's my last bit. I'm going to go one more. I'm going to go 5.80. 80? No, I'm, I'm going to be out. But I think you should give him 600 quid. Oh, that's so mean! <laughs> <laughs> What are you going to do with the money if we buy it? I, I'm going to give it to the children wow. um, and the wife to buy something for early Christmas presents. So uh, Fair play. If you could go to six, don't be a Scrooge. Pull oh, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll do for six. your children. I'll do 600. OK, that's sold. Is that a deal? Yes. OK. A deal. Well, well done, guys. Well, well done. done. Fantastic. Well done. Well done, mate. Well, the bidding room went very well. It started off at around 200, and I thought, that's a bit low. <laughs> so, giving us some money to buy an early Christmas present for the children. And, um, no, very happy. After some shrewd bidding, jubilant Stephen is taking home 600 pounds, doubling Simon's top valuation. Wow. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm slightly envious. Yeah, yeah, it's very I nice. love that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Well, well done, Shane. Are you going to put it indoors or out? I might put it out, actually. Yeah, a garden feature. Yeah. Beautiful. Simon. You're back. I'm back. I just <laughs> went... I, I, I found myself in the dealer room. How did you get on? I went straight in. Suddenly, my hand was up bidding. I don't blame I you. I got up to 400. Did you? I did. And then suddenly, I saw this image of my wife going, if you buy that, I'll kill you. So I went, I've got to leave. <laughs> so I just... <laughs> so you didn't get it? No. But there must have been other things you've bought in the past that perhaps you shouldn't have. Yeah, no, I did buy a, a, what I thought was a beautiful antique sort of toy car. And I got it back and I, as I unpacked it, it literally fell apart into a hundred pieces. Well, my late grandfather, actually, he was a, he was a, a GP. 
and they had a house sale when he died. I was, I was still young then, young teenager, but I wanted his medical skeleton, which was in a suitcase under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> but my grandmother wouldn't give it to me. Oh. So I missed out on that, you see. But they're worth a lot of money, aren't they? Well, yeah, it's rather macabre, though, isn't it? Yes. You know, I'm glad in a way she didn't let me have it. Yes. Next into the bidding room is Rachel. With an attic relic, she hopes will catch the dealer's eyes. It's a form of entertainment they would have had in Victorian times. And also, it's a part of history around the world they've been able to look at. What have we got here? <laughs> this is a little early 3D thing. It's a stack of cards. Yes, and they're both identical photographs. Identical photographs, yeah. But if you see them through two different lenses... Two different lenses. It looks as though you're layer one on top of Then you get that. Yeah. Same as we've got the virtual reality glasses now, haven't we? Yes. So these were the original ones. Incredible. Yeah. Well, That's let's it. find out a bit more about it. Thank you for bringing this little gorgeous collection of goodies in. Tell me about them. Have you had them a long time? Yes, they've been in the attic for 30 years because my husband had just boxed them away. So then I decided that I was going to put them online. OK. I've put a few stuff on to get rid of it. I call it junk. My husband right. calls it antiques because he, <laughs> he fetches quite a lot of antiques home and I just say, oh, more random junk to get rid of. Well, you know, you've come to the right place because Simon <laughs> is an expert, so I think right. it's time to ask him all about it. Simon? How it worked was quite simple, wasn't it? You've yeah. got two identical images. Yeah. You look through the viewer there, and your left eye processes the left and the right processes the right, and then your brain sort of amalgamates the two and gives you that three, 3D yeah. image. They're very, very clever. And they were very popular in that sort of mid to late 19th century, early 20th century. But, but what killed them was the movies. Oh, in the course. 30s, you know, yeah. once, once we had the movies, that was it. That was it. And in the cards lies the value. The viewers themselves, you can actually pick up at auction for a few pounds. Oh. Literally a few pounds. Right. Um, but it's all about the cards. And from my experience, subject matters to look out for are uh, early American scenes. I remember selling a load uh, a while back of uh, Los Angeles in its infancy, with oh. literally just a few houses on a street, you know. And they, they usually came in sets. You, they weren't sort of sold individually. As you may have noticed, a lot of them are numbered. Right, So yeah. you might have had yeah. views of San Francisco series of 30, you know. So you do it like that. Good. So now we can ask that question you're dying to. Right, Simon, what do you think the value will do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very interesting and hard question to answer. So, my feeling is, because there'll be some cards that are better than others... Yeah. I think you're going to be looking at 120, 140, 150. Yeah. So 120, 150, that's yeah. sort of bracket. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, Would I you? did think about that, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm basing that on if you, if you said £2 a card plus a few yeah. pounds for the viewer. Well, it's entertainment. They, yeah, entertainment. not bad for a, a lot of entertainment. Yeah. Very good luck. Thank and, you. And I, I wouldn't go anything lower than 140. Right. And thank you very much for bringing, them, bringing the whole collection in. It's fantastic. See you later. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks. Bye. 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 You could display all... Oh, yes, you could, couldn't you? Yeah. Decent sized frames yes. that held half a dozen or so, a yeah. dozen maybe. And then have them all in a... Yeah. yeah mm. Good idea. Simon valued it at £140, which I'm really happy with. So I'm a little bit nervous, uh, but I think I'll be fine. In my head, I've got an idea where I'm going to pitch my item. Hello. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello. Wow. That's interesting. Oh, wow. So, what's your name? Hi, my name's Rachel. Hello, Hello Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Pleased to meet you all. Hey, I'm going to have a little look at what you brought in. So, Rachel, how long have you had this item? It, my husband's had it 30 years. Okay. He did an house clearance 30 years ago, and it's actually been in a box and never unpacked. Oh, it's 3D? Yes, it's 3D, and all the pictures are the same 3D as you. Are they? Yeah. This is so cool! So, are they pictures of landmarks or, or life in general? There's to give pictures you an idea? of landmarks as well. There's, there's a picture of Egypt of the uh, 
pyramids. So they're going to give you an idea of life in it in the day. Yeah, and also yeah. landmarks for people and to... And there's, there's also some pictures uh, with little villages in the desert. Well, are not longer there now. Yeah, there's... there's a Real a very... history insight, then. And the actual device itself is actually quite detailed. You've got some nice... Um, um, engraving on there as well. That actually is quite amazing, isn't it? It's you don't so expect cool. that, do you? The depth, it looks like it's yeah. over there. Some amazing images there. There's amazing. one here of a period interior of chandeliers, Rococo work on the ceiling. This, this was just a... Is that room. your... Does it say where it your is? House? It's my lounge, yes. <laughs> yeah. If you go through them, James, there's some coloured ones. Oh, is there? Uh, there's over 70 cards in the pack. There's roughly about 73 cards that I've got there. I wasn't aware um, quite how old this was, actually, for them to be able to produce optics of that level then is really impressive. But, yeah, no, it's great. You've got so many cards and it's all, all complete. So, yeah, no, it's a really fun thing. I love it. So, shall we uh, commence with the bidding, guys? Yeah. The stereoscope, which is thought to date from the early 20th century, and the 70 viewing cards, have been valued at 120 to 150 pounds. But with interest from several of the dealers, could Rachel go beyond Simon's valuation? 30 pounds. No. OK, that's a quick no. What's a quick no? No. That's a quick no, OK. 50? No. Ooh. It's a lot, it's worth a lot more than that in entertainment value. And the cards are in the history and places what don't, what are probably not there now. How about sixty pounds? No. You're very definite. I'm you? very definite. Yes. Are you looking for a lot more than that? Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay. I know in my head what I want for it. Mm. You're not near it at all. So how about if we dangled eighty pounds? No. The seventy-three cards there. Mm. Mm. So I could actually just sell the cards separately and earn a lot more money than eighty pounds for it. Um, I'm sort of at one ten. I'll give you 140. No. And that's, yeah. Even if I sold the cards for £2 each, do you know what I mean? So I'd still get 140 anyway. And... Mm. I'll let you know where I am. I'm, I'm out because it's not my area, so I'm out on this. On the it's road. past my limit to that amount. I'm going to say I'm out as well. It's fine. I'm at 140. And I understand completely what you're saying. If I did it separately, I'll get more money, etc. But that's the balance of time and money. Um, I would like to be able to sell it in one go, but I will offer you 150. But that is me. 160? No, I wouldn't no. take it. I'll go 160. Have you stopped? I've stopped, I'm afraid. Stopped. Sorry. Anyone else? Sorry. I'll take 160. You got a deal? Yeah. Fantastic. Well Thank you very much indeed. I'm very happy. I've had a lovely day. Come on, my cash in my pocket. Couldn't wish for more. That's great. In my head, I knew I was going to take no less than 150. 80, 100. So getting 160, that's a £10 bonus. So, yes, I'm very pleased with it. So what did Simon actually value it that as? 140. Okay. I would have been prepared to take 150. Well, you did your job well, because you got you 160, which is great. Next seller is Stephen, with a medical marvel he hopes will have the dealers displaying their interest. The item that I'm taking into the bidding room today, or items, is large, it's made of glass, uh, it's very ornate. First up, he's getting some insider info from our expert, Simon. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> You're not going to miss those, are you? No, that's making a statement. Absolutely. Steve. Hello. Well, well done bringing these in. Yeah, I was a bit worried. I've got to say, <laughs> but you, know, you couldn't put one under each arm. I did. You did? I did, yeah. Where did you find them? I actually got them from a, a local auction. It's a bit of a hobby, really, so I just pop there now and again, and if something catches my eye, I buy it, try and shoe on it into my house, and then the wife 
says he doesn't go, so... Do you mind me asking what, what you paid for them in the auction? They were about £300, £350, something like that. Well, they're very grand. Should we now ask Simon what he thinks of them? Oh, yes, please. What we, what we call apothecary bottles. Um, some people actually call them show globes because they were designed purely for the shop window. Yeah. To grab your attention as you were walking past. I love all this um, star cut there, and then we've got um, on this side there's the diamond cut, this beautiful faceted knob there by this finial. I've often seen them, but not with the, with the cutting. Yeah, and even, even if you look at certain angles, Nigel, you can see the odd sort of bubble in the glass. Yeah, you? no, it's, it's they're very striking. Really, really nice. Date-wise, they're a little difficult. I mean, personally, I'd put them round about the 1900 mark. So they're proper antiques in the true sense of the word. Condition? There's nothing really that worries me terribly. There's a, a little nick right on the base there, a little sliver chip. But, I mean, the pieces are so massive that, that that's yeah. lost, isn't it, really? Yeah. They've got that wow factor. Yeah, definitely. That's the easiest way to say it, isn't it? So I think it's time to ask that very important question. What, what are they worth? Well, I mean, you, you're at a good advantage because you know what you paid for them. Um, so they stand you at about 340, 350-ish. I, I can see a profit in that, Steve, to be honest. To me, £200 a bottle is nothing, so that's 400. So I'm going to say four, 500 bracket for the pair. So I think you'll do well. OK, are you happy with that? Uh, very happy, yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing Thank them in. You. You're amazing. welcome. Thank you. You can't not sell no, those, can it's going to be amazing. I mean, they are just stunning. I think uh, all five dealers are going to love these, and I just think, personally, they're going to sell themselves. They are unusual, they're beautiful items, uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting in there and hopefully playing them. After a solid valuation from Simon, it's time for Stephen to face the dealers, including Ian, who loves buying statement pieces. Hi there. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, Hello. How are you doing? Right, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hi, Steve. Would you like to reveal what you bought in for us, please? OK, that's going to cost you now. Yeah, is it? Yeah, just to look. <laughs> Fair play. Oh, wow. Oh, my wow. goodness. Wow, wow, wow. Good grief. They're amazing. How did you come by these? I got these from an auction uh, uh, near to me. Just fell in love with them, really. I just thought, I haven't seen anything like that. They do resemble the chemist jars, don't they? Yes, yeah. I was told it was cut glass. It is cut glass. Yeah. So that's a work of art in itself. Yeah, yeah. If they were original, they would have been Victorian, late Victorian. I mean, the Apoca 3 would have several of these in the shop window, fill them with very brightly coloured liquids yeah. to make people come into the shop. Yeah. But they wouldn't have had the, the circles or the etched design on the other side. Great, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's very unusual to find a pair of them. And I'd seen them on a website in America uh, for a lot of money. A lot of money. Exactly the same, were they? Exactly the same. They're the only two, other two I could find that look like that. I think they're real statement pieces. What are you going to do if you sell them with the money? I'll probably hand it over to the boss. <laughs> it's a birthday soon, so maybe I'll just get something nice for a birthday. Oh. So, guys, are we going to start the bidding? Yeah, let's. The apothecary glasses have been valued at 400 to 500 pounds. Time to see if Stephen can push the dealers up to or even beyond that valuation. I'll start at 50 pound the pair, and that's extremely low. But we've got to start somewhere. I'll make a bid of 200. It's a big jump. Well, I think 50 quid's a bit. 220. 240. I'm not on a comedy show, am I? <laughs> <laughs> no. You're mile, miles off. Miles off. I don't doubt it. For me, they're too big, um, which limits the market for my client base. I think that's a good thing, though, because, like, you don't want most people to have something like that. No, you don't. You're very you, good you know, at selling. If you've, if you've got that, <laughs> you've got something that nobody else has got. James, you're awfully quiet down the other end. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm not going to get close enough to where you want me to be. But I would bid 300. So that makes them £150 each. You think that's all they're worth? I have to make a profit. You'll make a massive profit. Trust me. If you don't, I'll give you your money back. <laughs> 
I definitely don't have the clientele for this. I deal in quite a lot of smalls. All right, guys, so we seem to be teetering and umming and ahhing really quite a bit. I mean, where are we with this? I'm, I'm saying I'm out at about 300 quid. I'm definitely out. You're out. I'm out. You're out. I'm out. You're out. Yeah, I mean, my bid was 300. I think for them to prize them from my hands, I'd need a bit more. Okay. I'm more than happy to drive them back home and stick them in the, in the studio. I think you might be having to drive them back home and That's pop fine. them in the studio yeah. for a bit longer. That's fine. OK, mate, we're out. Apologies. No, it's fine. It's fine. Brilliant. Good to meet you, then. And you yeah. guys, all the best. <laughs> Take, Take care. You. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. Thanks, Thanks. Bye. Bye. Uh, Sadly, there was a, a no sale today, but a um, bit disappointed. But it's been actually really interesting to find out more about the, the items that I brought in. It's just one of those things, so never mind. Life goes on. It's all about experiences. Next into the bidding room is Ryan, with a traditional item he's hoping will catch the dealer's eyes. The item I brought along today was played by children back in the early 1900s to learn about numbers. And to help Ryan get a fair price, he's off to see Simon for an expert valuation. Or oh, this could be uh, housing very large knitting needles. <laughs> 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 it's been the biggest jumper ever, wouldn't it? <laughs> biggest jumper ever. <laughs> Hello, Ryan. Thank you for coming to the bidding room and bringing this gorgeous object. What is it? What's in there? It's a, a game that my son and I play. Uh, OK. It's an old wooden fishing game, but it doesn't really grab his attention. <laughs> it doesn't grab his attention. Oh, it's very cute. It's Victorian, isn't it? Yes. So maybe so. it's a bit old for him, maybe. So what do you do? You have these little... These are little fish. I'm going to pass that over to you, Simon. And I'm going to lay out some of these fish just to see if you can... you can catch anything in the bottom of the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Have a go at that. Any luck? Uh, no. no. We've got no. a shopping trolley. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on. Look at that. I can see it taking a long time in the parlour. <laughs> it would do. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole premise of this now, now that we've caught this fish, you now have to guess whether it's an odd number or an even number. So I'll leave that to you. Have a guess, Nigel. What do you think? It's odd an or odd even? number. So now you'd look underneath. Yeah. And what have we got? One. One. Oh, so you're right. I was right. right. Yes. So in the context of the game... Oh, it's really clever there. ..you would then get to keep that. You're spot on that it's Victorian, but, however, I would say it's probably very late Victorian, so right slap bang on 1900, 1910, so very early 20th century. Collectible? Yes, well, they are, and built to last. I mean, it's all wood, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's not going to go yeah, anywhere, yeah. so... So, all that information, important. Shall we ask Simon that very important question now, which is... How much do you think it's worth? <laughs> well, I think, to sum up, we've got a very visual item, which is, which is a, a good plus point. So we're coming from the late Victorian age, around about 1900, 1910, that sort of date. Still in the original box, which is very good. It's not absolutely complete, but it's a good 80, 90% there. And I think you'll do really well with it. So I reckon about 50 pounds. 50 pounds, does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. Best of luck in the dealer's room. Thank you for bringing it. Lovely, thank you. I'm determined to hook one, <laughs> even if it takes me an hour. <laughs> it, could, it could well do. Could well do. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> I feel quite confident about the next stage. I think it will fetch a good price uh, and uh, tell me who to aim for, really. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. Hello. How are you Hi. doing? Good, thank you. Excellent. Oh, that looks intriguing. May I just go and have a look at that? Come on, Ian, show us what it is. It's a big domino set. It's a game. Ooh, does it say on the label? Strangely enough, yes, it says parlour game, so you'd play this in the parlour. Okay. Oh, I know what it is. Yes, I've got it. It looks like a fishing rod. This. It is. It's an early fishing game. For the parlour? What do you think, sort of 1890? Have you played that game before then, Ian? I've never Not played yet. that game. A parlour game. So is that Victorian? It's got to be. Those are in the days of no television, wasn't it? Yes, well, my son and I play old games together. 
Hey, did you want to have a look? I am, because you're fishing around it and I want to see if I'm hooked on it. Oh, here we go. Have you, ever played, have you played it once or twice, then? Yeah, I've played it a few times. Have you? Yeah, I don't know. Not too much. Have a little play, Tash. Oh, I'll tell you what, though, I've never, ever done fishing before, so this will be my first time, so bear with me. Tash, if you can get ten fish... Ten? In, oh, come on. ..in, in one consecutive <laughs> go, I'll buy you fish and chips. Yeah, we haven't got two hours. Exactly. Uh, you shush you. Yeah, do you know what it is? It's the string. Yeah. It's too light, cos it's got knitting yarn on it. That is... It needs a look, heavier string. It does look like a later piece of string, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely is. It's not, no. I think if once you've replaced that string, I'll be there all day. Sorry. I've got, yeah. I've got no patience with this one. Sorry. <laughs> well, that saved me fish and chips yeah. then. It's a nice box, though. It is a nice box. As a functional game, questionable. OK, right. so why are you selling it and what are you going to use the money for? Uh, I'd like to buy another game for my son. What, an easier one? Yeah, an easier one. <laughs> Skittles. The Skittles. <laughs> uh, Okay. Yeah, we play games together, uh, sort of older games. Oh, that's nice. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. I think it's so cool. OK, well, I think seeing as we've all had a little chip in and a little banter about it, I think we need to get the bidding rolling, do you? The Victorian fishing game, with original decorative box, is valued at £50. So, will the bidders bite? OK, who's going to start then? Well, you cast the first vote. Oh, I was fishing yeah. for a first bidder. There we go. Bidder. Oh, yeah. No one's Checks taken the bait. Oh, yeah, this could go on a lot. Um, £20. Don't look at me. I'm sorry, it's not for me. It's lovely, but it's just not for me. My kids are a bit older than that. <laughs> it's not for me, but it's cheap. 30 quid. I'm just looking at it from the box only, to be honest with you. And 30 probably would have been my max on that. Sorry, Ryan. Oh, come on. No, I don't come on me. Right, every time I look at your website, you've got a plant in a teapot. Think how many little bonsais you could put in there. James, <laughs> James, come on, you're all sitting at the end. No, don't I, just it's going to be wasted with me. Sorry. OK, so at 30, that was kind of my roof, my ceiling. Um, I think I'm, I'm out, I'm sorry. Sorry, Ryan, that's me out as well. OK, so Ada's in at 30. The only reason I'm thinking I might have a go at it, because I do know a guy that owns a toy shop and I think is a window display, although it's un incomplete, it would look quite nice. So, but it's not... I don't think it's mega bucks, but 35. I... I, I don't... It's, I don't want to go anymore, so I'm going to go out. OK. Ryan, 35 on the table. Um, yeah, I'll take that. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Deal? Done deal. deal. Fantastic. Well done, thank you. Well the fishing game was snapped up by Ian for £35. £15 below Simon's valuation, but Ryan walks away happy. My overall experience today has been, uh, it's been very good. I've really enjoyed it. But learning more about the game, so I get to tell myself a bit more about what we played. And, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's nice to get a bit of money towards uh, his next game. I'm going to sit alone in the winter with a little candle and see how many I can pick up. <laughs>
Well, I mean, first of all, original box, which, yeah, is a bit tatty, but you'd be surprised how much that counts in its favour. And he's a reproduction of the 1920s edition, but this one came out probably, you know, 1990s, that kind of vintage, and he's in absolutely pristine condition. Absolutely pristine. The Stiff buttons there, which is what you want to see. Still got his little paper labels and that with him as well, which yeah. is quite nice. He's got lots going for him. The only thing he hasn't got going for him, of course, is age. Yes. And to serious Stiff uh, bear collectors, they want the early ones, you know, the, the early 1900s models, which are worth many hundreds and, and sometimes into four figures, as you know. I suppose it's a good time to ask the uh, all-important question, which is, Simon, how much do you think this is worth? Well, I think, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I think because he's a nice collectible item and in such lovely condition, I can't argue with Beth's sort of estimate of, of 50 pounds, to be honest. I think that's where he's going to be. 58 men possibly up? Yeah, 50 plus, 50, 50 plus. 50 plus. Does that sound good to you? Perfect. Fantastic. Thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. I think you'll do really well. Thank We're on your side. Thank you. Have a little play. Again, that's uh, antique versus modern now, isn't it? It certainly we'll is. see how the market goes. Uh. Oh. I think it actually went really well. They said that if I'd kept it a little longer, like 50, 60 years, it could shoot up in price to four digits, but I'm not planning to keep it that long. <laughs> it's now time for Beth to face the dealers. Might this spark interest with vintage toy fanatic AD or Jane, who loves decorative items? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> How are you? Oh. I'm good. <laughs> it's a box. Hey. Hello. What's your name? My name's Beth. Hi, Hi Beth. 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 Hi, Beth. Okay. Beth. Hi. So is what's on the box a clue to what's inside? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Then I'm going to have a little look. So I can see the name Stife on the box, which is a make of Teddy Bear. How old is it? They think it was made around 20 years ago. Hello, little fella. So, yeah, so what we're looking at, it's a 1998-1999 bear, so fairly modern, but based on a 1920s style. You know, the big pads, a quite big nose. He's newer than I would want to see, but obviously... It's still quality and it's beautiful. He will talk to me somehow. So if I just send him forward and send him... Oh, he's a little bit shy. Oh, bless him. Oh, oh he's not going to pain. He's, he's not. He's just, he's just shy. Look at them. What's I mean... his name, hon? Well, I never named him. What? But the guy, well, I was always freaked what out by him. You didn't him. name really? him. Yeah. Really? My first ever memory of the bear was... I was four and I was sitting on the shelf and it fell off in the middle of the night, and all I heard was... <laughs> <laughs> From there, oh, it's bless. just been a no-go. <laughs> oh. But you love him now? Obviously. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why. But the, the guys next door called him Randolph. Oh. Okay, Randolph. Randolph. Should be related to dropping off a shelf, surely. It's got to be a name there. Yeah, like tumble or something. Yeah, tumble. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. OK, so, Beth. This guy over here quite likes bears, as you've probably noticed. You might have a dark horse over there, possibly. Dark, I'm not no, sure. it's a brown bear, not a dog. <laughs> but uh, I would look more towards that end of the room for your buyer today. Shall we kick off the bidding then, guys? The bear, complete with its original box, is valued at a minimum of £50. With the dealers curious, can Beth do even better? I'll start at 20 quid. I'll go 30. I thought you weren't interested. I said I'll start, I'm not going to finish. 40 pounds. But Tumble needs homing, because you pushed him off the shelf. Oh, I wouldn't push him. Oh, look at her before. She was pretty this tall. I've got a, now she's upset her, I've got a bit of 45 now. 50? Oh. He's looking at you. Please, Dad, you've named me Tumble already. So where are we? I'm wondering whether to bid 55, that's where we're at. So I'll bid you 55. 60. 70. My daughter might like that. Yeah. Make sure you don't put it on the shelf above a bed, though. Uh, let, OK, so we've got a new game now, so let's just see 
how far James will go for this teddy bear. <laughs> I think your daughter will love him. 75. You don't know that it could be her favourite toy from now on. It will be her yeah, favourite toy. Her, it could be her lifelong bear that she brings to uni and first boyfriend meets the You're bear. Good. <laughs> You're a good bear. She's playing a the good game, this one. boyfriend meets the bear. Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> It'll just get ruined and puked on. <laughs> May as well just chuck 80 quid out the window. He says he's bid 80 quid. So you're at 80. That's my last bid. This is getting a bit heavy for me, I'm out. I won't go any higher. I'll give you 100 pounds for it. I mean, if nobody else wants to go up, then I'll do that. Is Tumble coming home with me? I think so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It actually went better than expected. I'm quite happy I've got rid of it. I think AD will be the perfect parent for this bear. Do you know, I feel a bit sick now. Mm. Let's all just get out and leave them. Yeah. Oh.